I would like to thank Ryerson Theatre School uh, for inviting us today. Essentially, this is, uh, we're in the middle of, is it a month-long festival, the New Voices? Two, two weeks. Two ten, weeks festival. Ten uh, nights of unique theatre and dance. Yeah, uh, and that's the, the <coughs> work that the students uh, have written and <coughs> created. And we have some uh, information about that as well. But so they thought that uh, they have this dark night in the middle of the festival and offered us the opportunity to come in here and, and have this discussion about playwriting. So I'd like to very much thank uh, Ryerson Theatre School and its students, uh, including the technical staff and the front of house staff, and they're also in the middle of putting on a festival. Uh, so thanks very much for them for taking what could have been a quiet day uh, and, and hosting us. Uh, I'd also like to point out that this event has been made possible from the Theatre Museum's perspective uh, by uh, a number of uh, donations that we have received. Specifically, uh, tonight's made possible by uh, donations that have been made in the name of Herbert Whitaker, who's our <coughs> founding chair. Uh, and one of those donors, in fact, was Herbert Whitaker uh, in his will. Um, so just uh, to thank Herbert and others who uh, are supporting the work of Theatre Museum Canada. So you can mention us in your will and like us on Facebook. Um, <laughs> and also in terms of volunteers, I'd just like to thank, uh, we have a few board members uh, that are here. We have uh, Marlene Smith and RJ Gilbert and Virginia Cooper. Uh, and for those of you who are at Ryerson Theatre School now and you think that, oh, I'd like to join a board sometime, they tell me that all I have to do is go to meetings uh, and it's not very much of a time commitment. Uh, these three can certainly let you know that uh, you put in a fair bit of time and I certainly uh, appreciate um, what that makes possible. <coughs> and on the inside, I'd like to point out that uh, Michael Healy is in fact quite ill today. Uh, so <coughs> Michael uh, emailed at around 2 o'clock and said that he couldn't come uh, and then about 2.05 he suggested uh, his wife had said that I could come as well. Uh, and we will actually go back in the email records to prove that we had actually asked uh, Morwen if she could come much, much earlier. Uh, but he had declined on her behalf uh, to be part of this panel. And uh, so you've got the bios. I won't go through uh, all the material for all of them, but just let you know that uh, Morwen, for those of you who aren't familiar, uh, is a renowned playwright. Uh, who had been a ter uh, at Tarragon Theatre in residence for a while, uh, and plays that she's uh, written include The Pessimist, The Optimist, Little Mercy's First Murder, uh, and for the Shaw Festival, uh, she translated, adapted The Bear and The Proposal, and now, and as well, works uh, as a TV writer, uh, doing mostly one-hour dramatic series, including Rookie Blue and Saving Hope. Other plays include, over here, uh, liquor, guns, karate, and music for contortionists. And in 1996, she graduated from the National Theatre School. And in 1996, Sheldon was teaching at the National Theatre School. Uh, so Sheldon, in fact, uh, is teaching play, uh, not, you don't teach playwriting here. No, not but, here, okay. but there, I, I ran the playwriting program. Yeah. And I occasionally run into Morwen. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, so both Morwen and, and Lisa uh, are, are students. Um, of Sheldon's. And also I was just uh, looking at the bio for Sheldon and, and uh, don't actually mention any of his specific plays. Uh, and, a, and a highlight probably would be the um, play by the name of Ned and Jack uh, that was at the Stratford Festival for two seasons and then it went to Broadway. Um, so if you've heard of those places, um, you'll have a sense for how successful that was. They brought it back and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, terrific. So thanks very much. Uh, so that's the that's who our panelists are. And uh, we've, what we've done is we've got four or five questions that we've prepared ahead of time, so I'll ask those. Uh, and then we'll open it up to <coughs> questions from the floor. <coughs> and also, after that, we'll do the, uh, the quick draw. So does that sound like an evening? Yeah. Perfect, we'll get underway. Oh, thanks very much. So the first question that we had uh, was just if you could tell us a bit about how you sit down to write, uh, and do you have a routine? Um, I, uh, my answer is now is compromised because I do work mostly in television and I'm the head writer of a television show so I write, I don't, I write all the time and my routine is I just write all the time. <laughs> and then I go to meetings and then I write all the time. But when I, when I wrote plays, um, now my routine is I, 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 I'm, I, I write at night a lot as well as working in the day. I put the kids down and then I write. But when I was a playwright, I feel like I'm, the mic is loud, I wrote, I like to wake up and work in the morning. And then I'd go out and search for um, friendship <laughs> in the world. <laughs> and then I would do a little night shift at night. I would say that's kind of similar to, uh, to what I do, that I, I write 
maybe like nine till 12. That's all I can take. And then I eat lunch and I like watch a TV show. <laughs> maybe Survivor. <laughs> you know, just like sort of just, I kind of just completely do something that's uh, kind of outside of that. And I go outside because otherwise <coughs> I become a little bit, um, a little bit crazy. So I go outside and then I'll come back and, and again, like do sort of like another couple hours later on in the evening. I had a staff. I would give them an assignment wow. in the morning. I would go out, <laughs> early morning movies, whatever. And then if they did good, they got to eat. If not, <laughs> um, no, my, my routine is pretty similar to that. I'm an early mo morning person. Um, and, and especially now that I uh, teach full time, that's the only time I have is very early morning, like four or five. And what I found was that if it was new material, I, I would prefer to, I would do it in a cafe with the energy of people around. And um, then I would take it home and in typing it into the computer, that was my editing process. Um, the ritual, if I were starting a new piece or returning to a piece that I had abandoned, would be day one, I sit at the computer, acknowledge it, it get up and leave. <laughs> the, the, the second day, I actually go, okay, here's the piece you want to work on. I acknowledge, here's the piece I want to work on. I go away. And then the third day, it starts. If I get to 20, 30, 40 pages, then it, there's, it, it just keeps going day and night. But up until that point, um, no. <laughs> 